Scoop Tales, episode 47, Zeem Sneeze and the Big Freeze of Niagara Falls. Oh, laugh at Zeem Sneeze, if you will, but he was brave when he was ill. When he was ill, he was so brave, he swallowed all his mother gave. And so you scarcely will believe, he wiped his nose upon his sleeve. Chapter One Once upon a time, there was a brave and gallant young goop boy called Zeem Sneeze. He was always around to lend a helping hand and support a fellow goop. Zeem Sneeze was fearless and ever ready to embark on an adventure into the unknown. He loved marching bands and all of the pomp and circumstance that went along with them which meant that he almost always wore a tall drummer's hat and had his tiny drum strapped across his chest. The local marching band was a source of great joy for Zeem Sneeze, and when he wasn't practicing with them, he joined up with his good goop friend, Tiza. He and Tiza got on like two peas in a pod for two very good reasons. One. Zimsnees didn't mind that Tiza constantly teased him about the fact that he sneezed all the time and didn't use a tissue. Sometimes he just used his sleeve, and Tiza would laugh and say, I saw that, Zimsnees. Do you think your sleeve is a giant tissue? And two, because together they formed the perfect little marching band. Zimsnees would beat his drum while Tiza would grab her little pail and bang it with a stick. They had practiced so often that they could almost instantly create a beautiful rhythm. Together, they made a giant raucous, and you could hear them coming from miles away. For the most part, no one minded the noise, but from time to time, it did grow frustrating, and Zeem Sneeze's mother would ask him to go far afield so she didn't have to listen. One bright, shiny spring morning, Zeem Sneeze woke up at the crack of dawn. He slipped into his favorite drummer outfit and pulled out his drum. Just as he was about to start pounding away, it occurred to him that maybe his parents wanted to sleep in, and they may not appreciate his early morning noisemaking. Instead, he gathered up his drumsticks and silently headed out the door to Tiza's house. Tiza was also up early and anxious to get started on the day. She was racing around her room when she saw the tip of Zeem Snee's drummer hat headed toward her house. She whipped open her bedroom window and waved. Tiza was just about to shout out a huge, Good morning, Zeem Sneeze! when she saw him raise a finger to his lips and motion for her to come outside. Tiza quickly put on her favorite sunbonnet, grabbed her little pail, and slid down the banister right out her front door, where Zeem Sneeze was waiting. Good morning, Zeem Sneeze! She sang out. Good morning to you, he replied. Come with me. I have a marvelous idea that came to me in a dream last night. Tiza's eyes grew wide. Ooh, what is it? She asked excitedly. I'm supposed to find a creek and follow it, he said as he shrugged his shoulders a little. Hmm, that sounds mysterious and I like it. Let's do it. I know where there is a little creek not far from here. Come on, said Tiza as she skipped away. Zeem Sneeze immediately followed her as he gently started to tap on his drum. They found the creek and went in the downstream direction as they drummed together. The creek swelled with water and they banged away louder and louder, knowing that no one was around to hear the noise. They laughed and made music until the creek led them into a magnificent clearing covered in green everywhere they looked. There were little green mossy hills 
with creek water sliding through like a long, silent snake. This place is so beautiful. It is like we're on a giant carpet of green. Look, look at the creek. Where is it going now? Asked Tiza as she pointed to the gushing water that disappeared over an edge. Both Tiza and Zimsnees hurriedly ran down to the edge of the water and peered over. The creek had turned into a steep waterfall that went down, down, down into a very deep ravine. Tiza peered over the edge trying to see the bottom of the waterfall, but she couldn't. It was just a long stream of water that gushed on and on with no end in sight. That looks scary, she said as she glanced over at Zeem Sneeze, who sneezed and then wiped his nose on his sleeve. Zeem Sneeze, your sleeve isn't a tissue, Tiza laughed. <laughs> well, I don't have anything else and I keep sneezing, he said as he peered over the falls. Then Zeem Sneeze sneezed again, but this sneeze was different. It was giant, bigger than any sneeze he had ever sneezed. His body jolted upwards, and his gigantic sneeze hurled him right over the edge of the falls. Zeem Sneeze! Tiza called out as her voice echoed over the rushing water, and she watched his little drummer hat disappear into the deep, deep drop below. Chapter 2 Zeem Sneeze could feel the velocity of the falls carrying him straight down. The water poured over him, forcing him to close his eyes. He felt cold and icy and thought the fall would never end. Until finally, Zeem Sneeze was completely submerged in a freezing pool of water. He felt a slippery rock beneath his feet and used it to propel himself to the surface, where he pushed through and took a huge gulp of air. He was in a dark cave with water coming down all around the edges. Zeem Sneeze swam to the edge of the pool and climbed up into a tiny tunnel. There didn't appear to be another way out, and he didn't want to go back into the icy pool. The tunnel was dark and narrow, but Zeem Sneeze pushed up and through using his drummer's hat to lead the way. He popped out onto a stone platform and looked straight ahead to see huge amounts of water rushing by. The sound was overwhelming. I think I'm behind a waterfall, he said out loud to no one in particular. It made him feel better to speak out loud when he felt all alone. He stared as the water gushed down around him and watched as beautiful rainbow-striped fish flew by. Zeem Sneeze walked a little closer to the falls to get a better look at the fish. And then he sneezed. His sneeze was big and loud. And all of a sudden, one of the little rainbow fish that was flying by popped out of the falls and landed in a pool of water near his feet. Zeem Sneeze wiped his nose on his sleeve as he looked down at a little rainbow trout. The little trout looked up at Zeem Sneeze and frowned just a tiny bit, but she did frown. Oh, sorry. I know no one likes it when I do that, but there are no tissues here, he said. It's okay. I don't mind. Are you going to eat me? asked the baby trout. Eat you? Why would I eat you? replied Zeem Sneeze. Well, I'm away from my school now, and my mom says there are predators everywhere. She calls them fishermen. Are you a fisherman? <laughs> Zeem Sneeze laughed and said, <laughs> I'm definitely not a fisherman. I'm a goop, and my name is Zeem Sneeze. Oh. Well, I've never heard of a goop, but I guess it's okay, as long as you don't want to eat me. My name is Cleo. Now I have to figure out how to get back to my school, and you have to figure out how to get out of this tunnel and to the other side of the falls before it's too late. 
said the baby trout. What do you mean, before it's too late? asked Zemsneez, with just a little tinge of fear in his voice. Cleo explained to Zemsneez that they were in a tunnel underneath Niagara Falls, and very soon the falls would start to freeze over. There was an energy beneath the falls known as the Big Freeze. The Big Freeze didn't like anyone lurking beneath in the tunnels because it eroded the rock. They were on the Canadian side of the falls, and in order to escape the Big Freeze, Zemsneez would have to get over to the United States side. The Big Freeze chased all intruders straight into the United States side of Niagara Falls, where there were no underground tunnels. It's Mother Nature's way of protecting herself. She doesn't want us here, so she sends the Big Freeze, explained Cleo. How am I supposed to get to the other side? asked a very alarmed Zeem Sneeze. Well, that is the tricky part. For me, it's easy. I will hop back into the falls and swim back to my school. But for you, it will be far more dangerous. And unfortunately, the Big Freeze won't stop until you are gone or until he has frozen you forever. Without warning, a deep, chilly frost crept through the tunnel and chilled Zemsneez to the bone. Cleo took one glance up at Zemsneez and said, You have to leave now! Before you freeze over, find the hidden passage! Then she jumped into the falls and disappeared. Chapter 3 Zeem sneeze felt the cold start to freeze over his toes. Unable to move his feet, he tried wiggling his fingers, which still had movement. Even though Zeem sneeze sensed he was in danger, he managed to keep his calm. Over the years, he had used his drumming as a sort of meditation to keep himself calm and centered whenever he grew anxious. He picked up his little drumsticks and started drumming rhythmically as he chanted. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, over and over again. And even though the air only got colder, Zeem Sneeze could feel his tiny feet start to thaw. He was generating heat with his movement. As soon as he could walk, he moved away from the rushing water and deeper into the dark tunnel beneath the falls. He thought of Cleo's last words before she jumped. Find the hidden passage! The sound of the falls began to fade into the background along with the daylight. Zemsneez was now deep beneath the roaring waters of Niagara Falls in search of a secret passageway that he hoped would lead him into the United States and away from the big freeze. It was so dark, he had to start feeling his way. He was moving along the walls, using his hands to guide him, when he felt a thick, frozen stick of ice pop out. First one, and then another. Zeem Snee's heart started to beat a little faster as he thought of the big freeze. An arctic blast of air shot through the tunnel, followed by pointed icicles, which jabbed at him from every angle. Zeem Sneeze ducked and dodged his way through the sharp icicles, using his drumsticks to fend them off one after the other. The Arctic air grew colder and colder, and just when Zeem Sneeze thought he would give up from exhaustion, he saw a tiny passageway. He immediately lay on the ground and pushed himself through the entry as a razor-sharp icicle shot out and narrowly missed slicing his feet. Zeem Sneeze slid up and out of the passage to find himself at the top of Niagara Falls with the most magnificent view. He had no idea just how stunning the falls were since he had landed underneath them. They were half frozen. Zeem Sneeze just stood in awe as he looked all the way across the falls to the other side. The other side was the United States, 
and he was in Canada. He knew the big freeze would catch him if he didn't cross, but there was no way to cross this water without being taken down into the roaring falls. Zimsnees knew he would never survive that. Cleo was a light little fish, and she could zoom over the falls without injury. Zimsnees, on the other hand, would perish. He just stared at the other side until he heard a tiny voice say, The big phrase is coming for you. Everyone feels him. You need to cross to the other side. Zimsnees looked down to see yet another rainbow trout, very similar to Cleo, only this one was bigger and stronger. I'm Finley. I live here at the falls, and I promise you, you don't want the big freeze to catch you. I've seen what he can do. You need to cross, pleaded Finley. I know, I know, but how? Just look at those waters. It's impossible, said Zim Sneeze. I have an idea, but first, how badly do you want to make it to the other side? asked Finley. Oh, very badly. I want nothing more than to cross over to the United States and escape the big freeze so I can go back to Goop World, said Zim Sneeze. Well then, you'll have to walk across a tightrope. We trout have plenty of fishing wire stored away, and we can make you a tightrope that goes from one side of the falls to the other. But you will have to walk it. Finley said as he looked up at Zim Sneeze. What? Walk a tightrope across Niagara Falls? That's impossible, declared Zim Sneeze. No, it's not. It's been done before. I saw it, and so did many others. Zim Sneeze thought about everything that Finley said. He was terrified of walking across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. But if someone else had done it, so could he. You need to go soon. I will call for the rest of the trout to put up the tightrope now, or it will be too late, said Finley. Then he glanced over behind Zim Sneeze, where in the not too far distance, razor-edged icicles were pushing through the snow, headed straight for them. Chapter 4 Zim Sneeze could hear the icicles shredding through the snow as he stood on the chilly shore of Niagara Falls. He didn't want to look back at them because he was afraid that he would go into an even deeper state of panic. He held tight to his little drumsticks and then he straightened up his back and held his head high. You are right, Finley. I must cross the tightrope. Please put it up as quickly as possible. If someone else can do this, I can do this too. You most certainly can, and we will be there to cheer you the entire way. All of the rainbow trout will follow along with you, Finley responded in his most positive voice. Hearing Finley's support immediately gave Zim Sneeze a boost of courage. There was nothing to do but wait for the trout to attach the fishing line. Zim Sneeze knew he would have several more minutes of waiting, and he didn't want to send himself into a tailspin of worry and fear, so he decided to close his eyes and shut out the big chill. He squeezed his eyes shut, but his heart was still pounding as he felt the big chill creeping over him. Zim Sneeze thought about what his mother had taught him about visualizing. She told him whenever he wanted to achieve something that he should visualize it and practice it in his mind first. Not only would this calm him down, but it would help him in almost any situation and it would keep him focused on his goal. Okay, I'm going to visualize crossing Niagara Falls one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, he thought to himself. Then Zim Sneeze 
started to imagine himself crossing the fishing wire tightrope and successfully landing in the United States. He saw himself calmly crossing the falls, looking straight ahead to his destination, when he was interrupted by Finley. Sam sneeze now! Start now, and we will follow along with you, called out Finley from the water below. Zeem Sneeze looked down and saw Finley surrounded by at least 100 rainbow trout ready to cheer him on. Don't look down. Look straight ahead. Don't look at us. Never look down. Never look around and never look behind. Just look straight ahead and take one step at a time. Let us take care of the rest, said Finley with complete confidence. Zeem Sneeze took a deep breath and stepped out onto the tight wire. He let it out as he put one foot in front of the other and began his tight wire crossing of Niagara Falls. The noise of the rushing falls sounded like music to Zeem Sneeze. He just kept putting one foot in front of the other. Finley and the rest of the trout were following along from the water. Zeem Sneeze could feel them, but he didn't dare look down at them. All he could do was put one foot in front of the other. When Zeem Sneeze was almost to the end, he felt a huge chill just inches from his back and he started to lose his concentration. He sensed that the big chill was right behind him, and he froze, unable to move forward. Finley could see it all from his place in the water. He saw the big freeze hovering right behind Zeemsneez, almost invisible, but he was there. Finley called out to Zeemsneez as gently and as confidently as he could, so as not to alarm him. Stay right there. I will take care of this situation. The calmness of Finley's voice made Zeem Sneeze feel better. He trusted him. So he stood still and waited and visualized himself making it to the end. Finley gathered all of his trout friends and they began to hop over the tight wire, going right through the big freeze and straight down the falls. First one then another and another, then 10 at once, then 20, until hundreds of tiny trout jumped right through the big freeze and shot down the falls. The big freeze couldn't resist the force of so many trout pushing through him, and soon they pulled him right over the falls. He's gone down the falls. You can finish now. You just need a toe in the United States to lose the big freeze forever, called out Finley. Zeem Sneeze could feel that the big freeze had vanished, and he quickly walked the last few steps of the tight wire until he could feel his big toe touch United States soil. And the second it did, he was sucked into a vortex of rushing water. The water surrounded him and pulled him downwards, but he wasn't scared. He knew where he was going. The waterfall carried him through time and space until he was gently placed back in Goop World. When he was finally still for a moment, Zeem Sneeze looked around and thought about his adventure, and then he smiled. He was very proud that he had walked a tight wire across Niagara Falls. I can't wait to tell Tiza about that, he said out loud as he set off to find her. But Tiza was nowhere to be found. She was lost deep in the Taj Mahal. But that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can and of course don't forget to subscribe to goop tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one you can tag us on social media at goop tales on either facebook or instagram 
I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.